How's everyone enjoying the 70 degree weather today? <laughs> it's beautiful out, boy. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the soil amendments that we use here at Juniper Level Botanic Gardens. Uh, my name is Jeremy Schmidt. I head up the research and grounds department. Um, and we, we put out a lot of soil amendments here. So I'm excited to share everything that I know and uh, hopefully it'll help everyone here with, with their gardens and in taking care of their soil. Um, I guess the best way to go about it, I've, I've got a flat over here with some pots of our soil amendments in it. And we'll just go through it. A lot of people depend on salt-based fertilizers. Oh, we need nitrogen, so let's get a bag of 10, 10, 10 and throw down some nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium in the form of salts, which is great, but you're salting your soil. What we like to do, we, we have never used any salt-based fertilizer in the gardens here at Juniper Level, and we, we don't plan to. Um, we instead like to feed the soil so that the soil can feed the plants. And believe me, it can feed the plants a lot better than, than we can. Um, one thing that Tony Avent says is, is that you can, um, if you eat candy bars all the time, you'll get bigger, but that's not necessarily a good thing. And the same goes for our plants. You know, if you feed them the salt-based fertilizer all the time, they will get bigger, but that, that's not necessarily a healthier plant. Um, so again, we take care of the soil. We treat it as a living thing. We feed the microbes in the soil. Here are a few of the things that we use. Um, one thing we use is green sand. Um, green sand uh, provides potassium in the soil. Um, it also will raise the pH a little bit, just because it is a cation. But um, potassium in our sandy soil seems to uh, seems to to drop out faster than other nutrients do. So we we use a lot of green sand in the gardens here. when we do our soil tests and we see that our uh, potassium index has gotten below 60. Don't exactly know what the, the number 60 means, except when we have NC State, uh, when they test our soils once a year, um, and we see that number drop below that, we, we boost it with green sand. And this is an Espoma product, that's the, the name brand. We usually get it by the bag from, I think, Green Resource. Many of these things come from Green Resource. Um, it's not extremely expensive, and it's certainly not extremely cheap either. But um, we use this usually between uh, 10 and 50 pounds per thousand square feet, depending on how deficient in uh, potassium that we are. It, um, it usually takes a, a good year to really get going in the soil. So often we'll do it every other year when the second year soil test says that it hasn't bumped it up like we'd hoped. But if, you, if you're dumping a lot of things like, um, if, if you're using something to drop the pH, let's say your pH gets too high and you try to drop the pH, that can actually flush some of this out of the soil is what we're finding. Um, when we need to raise the pH, we look at our soil test again. How do we need to raise our pH? So everybody here has heard about pH. That's real common. Oh, my pH is too high or it's too low. What does that mean? Uh, just like in the human body and nutrition, um, soils are all about ratios. And so in our soil, we look at our calcium to magnesium ratio, which is a very important thing in the human body as well. In the soil, we prefer a calcium to magnesium ratio that favors calcium about five or eight to one. Five or eight calcium to one magnesium. Somewhere in that vicinity is, is great. It's ideal for, for what we do here. Now, if our pH is too low and we want to raise it, we look at that ratio. If we are doing great in calcium, if it's in that five to eight, five or eight to one ratio, hey, we'll throw some dolomitic lime to raise the pH. Dolomitic lime has both calcium and magnesium in it. This product is easily available and rather inexpensive at big box stores and certainly from garden centers um, and, and um, outdoor um, garden supply centers. 
Dolomitic lime has both calcium and magnesium, but it will affect the soil in favor of magnesium in most cases compared to in favor of calcium. Even if it's equal, even if there's more calcium than there is magnesium in this product, magnesium is more willing, to my understanding, I might not have this exactly right, but it seems to be, it has a greater effect on the soil than calcium. It jumps in, in front of calcium as it uh, interacts with soil, as it raises the pH. So if we have to be careful with how much dolomitic, or rather how much um, magnesium we're applying, we seek out calcitic lime. And calcitic lime has a lot more calcium than it does magnesium in it. And so when you add it, you're adding more calcium than you are magnesium. Um, and it will favor calcium to magnesium in that ratio. Uh, this is a little harder to find. Uh, most, most big box stores and even most garden centers, they don't necessarily know the difference anymore. And they're just like, put some lime on it. But calcium is extremely important in the soil. And there's om only so many seats at the table on a soil particle for cations, which is a positively charged ion like calcium, like magnesium. There's only, only so many spots at the table for them to sit. So if magnesium comes in and takes all the, the spots at the table, then calcium has nowhere to sit and is not able to be in a position to work with plant roots. So calcitic lime is great. It costs quite a bit more than dolomitic lime. It's a little harder to find and you have to seek it out. Um, generally in small print on a bag of lime, somewhere on there it's gonna say it is derived from dolomitic lime or it is derived from calcitic lime. If the bag is pretty cheap, you can bet it's dolomitic lime. If it's really expensive, it's still probably dolomitic lime, but it might be calcitic. So, but we do use that to raise the pH on occasion. Um, and just for reference, at Juniper Level Botanic Garden, we try to keep our pH between 6.2 and 6.5. That range makes the most number of essential nutrients available um, in, in the soil. So if your pH is really, really high, where I grew up with, in the Midwest, it was upper sevens. At that pH, things like iron and many of the metal type uh, um, ions are locked up. They're just, it's, it's iron, it's not gonna rust at that pH. At a low pH, iron is freely available in the soil. But if it's very low, then there are other nutrients that are locked up. So at a pH between 6.2 and 6.5, we have the greatest number of nutrients available. Um, it also, I believe, is good for the, um, the micronutrients, the, the living portion of the soil. Um, when we need to lower the pH, which often happens if we're adding organic matter all the time, compost, that usually will bring the soil up to about a seven if, it's, if there's a lot of compost involved. So sometimes we like to push that pH down a little bit. And we use elemental sulfur. Um, most garden centers, some garden centers will have this, most box stores will not. But they will have something called garden, or garden sulfur. Um, that's not what you want because there's that's like a calcium sulfate or something like that. This is just sulfur. Um, be careful with this product. You don't want to use too much of it or you will burn your soil, you will burn your plants. Um, this will also get in your clothes and is activated by water. So when you wash your clothes, anything you wash it with will smell like elemental sulfur. <laughs> also, if you uh, if you uh, hitch a ride on a plane um, back to central Illinois so that you can put some elemental sulfur on your dad's garden um, to lower the pH from the upper sevens down to something reasonable, and then you get back on the plane with those clothes in your suitcase, your suitcase will get checked because they think you've been making bombs. <laughs> But it's not overly expensive. You'll just have to seek it out and find it if your pH is a little on the high side. Um, rock phosphate. That's one we don't have to use very often here because our soil here, being more sandy, is already very high in phosphorus. 
Um, however, Raleigh Red Clay, uh, which some of you probably have, especially the spark, sparkly kind, the, the red sparkly clay, it might be a little low in phosphorus. Rock phosphate, that's the organic solution to that. It takes a little while to really get going in the soil, but it's not super expensive, it works. Um, and we occasionally have to use it. Again, I think the Espoma Corporation sells it, available maybe at a, at a garden center. Probably not at Lowe's, but maybe it is. Maybe it's at a big box store. Other soil amendments that perhaps you wouldn't think about, but we use them all the time. Triple shred. I mean, you can see all around you the gardens. Well, the gardens behind you are, are mulched with triple shred hardwood mulch, and you, most of you have heard of that. But it's really a soil amendment. We're not just putting mulch down to make things look pretty um, or to keep weeds down. We put mulch down and we seek out mulch that breaks down quickly because we want that mulch to feed the soil. It also, of course, helps keep the soil moist, which means that the microbes don't dry out. You want to keep soil moist because if you dry your soil out, the microbes die or they go dormant at the very least. So we use triple shred. It amends the soil by adding compost. And we just mulch over the mulch we put down last year and by then in an irrigated situation, often it's broken down to a beautiful compost. All right. <laughs> permatill. I love this stuff. How many how many of you have used permatill in your gardens? Oh, we got hands now. So we, we got more and more people on board with this amazing product. Um, somewhere out in central North Carolina, they, they hack a bunch of slate out of the ground or shale or something, and then they heat it up ridiculously hot, and it, it pops. It's kind of like... Uh, like rock popcorn and so it's a little lighter than gravel um, but we use this we use a lot of this in certain parts of the garden here in this berm it is mixed 50 50 with our compost soil blend that we use in our garden beds so essentially it's 50 percent permatill 25 percent organic matter 25 percent native soil but obviously 50 percent permatill um, this reduces compaction. Uh, it, it is full of little holes, like kind of like pumice is. And so it holds air at whatever depth it's at. It has somehow, I don't quite understand how, it has an extremely high cation exchange capacity, which is essentially a soil's ability to exchange cations, which is, that's, that's the motor that runs root nutrient uptake, is the exchange of cations. Compost has a 20-something cation exchange capacity. Permatil has a 20-something cation exchange capacity. So any nutrients that you have in your existing soil, no matter what kind of soil you have, even if you don't have organic matter, if you have permatil mixed in, then the soil, the roots are able to uptake the nutrients that are available in that soil. Um, although it's not a silver bullet, voles do not like permatil. And it, if it's mixed at 33 to 50% with your soil, your vole activity will be will most likely be reduced. I found that to be true in my garden. Uh, I found that to be true here in the gardens uh, of Juniper Level. And here's probably the most obvious soil amendment ever, compost. How many of you use compost in your gardens? Okay, I hope everybody's got their hand up on that one. So we build our own compost here. Um, it is not a manure-based compost, which commercially, when you when you buy a truckload from Triangle Landscape or, or someplace like that, it's going to be a manure-based compost that is probably still a little bit hot. Hot meaning that you can smell what it's derived from. Um, here, it takes several months to make. We turn it several times. We mix in our native soil with it. Again, it's 50% native soil and 50% uh, leaves cut backs from the garden. Um, the city of Garner gives us all of their leaves, so we turn that in. The tree companies around here dump off loads of chips, so we add that. I siphon them in. Um, but um, yeah, we, we have thousands of yards of compost, and our, our beds are all built 
from a 50-50 blend that is in this cup. 50% native soil, 50% organic matter, pH 6.2 to 6.5. Often we will top dress our beds with more of this. Um, compost will generally lose one third of its volume in the first uh, few years. A good example of that is I built this bed one year and one month ago, essentially 13 months ago, a little less than that. When I stacked this, I painted that little irrigation head riser there right to where the level of the compost was. And it has settled two to three inches already. And that's not because people have been stepping on it or anything like that. The compost will lose volume over time. It actually releases some carbon dioxide into the air, which is part of what it's made of. So we like to top dress. Some of our beds over the years will start to, start to get a little lower to the ground. Um, and this is going to happen in everybody's garden. So that is a very important soil amendment, is just more compost, add it on. If you've got plants that don't mind a couple inches of compost going over them when they're dormant, then throw a couple inches of compost on them. Um, maybe it's you want to lift some plants up and then plant them back, you can do that. But yeah, keep uh, you can refresh your soil with new compost. and. Um, that, of course, is going to have that fresh batch of, of nutrients that, um, that come with it, um, as well as probably more available nitrogen than, than what's in, in a worn out soil. So those are our main soil amendments. Um, does, oh, did I talk about plant tone? I did not. There we go. So a lot of people use a salt-based fertilizer to throw nitrogen on the soil. We use plant tone. Again, that's in a spome product. I think it's a yield of 533, something like that, NPK. So it's got NPK in it, but it's, it's a living product. It has bacteria in it. So if your soil, it activates your soil. It feeds the microbes. It puts microbes into it. And um, as long as you keep your soil moist, um, then when you add plant tone, you shouldn't even have to use it every year. It should continue to feed your soil. It, it, it should activate it for years. So you could probably smell it from here if I shake it a little bit. Um, and believe me, when you apply this to the garden at about 50 pounds per thousand square feet, which is pretty heavy, um, it, it does a great job. You want to apply this maybe just before you add your mulch. So if you're going to mulch, throw this down first and then cover up that smell with, you know, throw this down and then cover up that smell with the triple shred. But um, we use this a lot. We've just got like six pallets of it in and they're 2,500 pound pallets. So we'll be, uh, we'll be throwing some of this around. Uh, yeah, I think that's all of them. Do you have any questions? Do you use root tone plus? We don't use any root tone, no. We, we just use a lot of plant tone um, in, our, in our good compost soil. Mm -hmm. Do the garden centers have plant tone? Or do yes, garden centers usually have it. Um, I would suggest, I don't know what green resource, I don't know what it costs at Green Resource, which is a local place that just sells kind of farm amendments, soil amendments in bulk. Because again, we bought, I think there are 50, 50 bags on a pallet. We just buy it by the pallet. Um, but I believe that, I, I think they sell to the general public, I think. You'd have to call Green Resource. But then you can buy a bigger bag of it. And it's a lot less than, than what a big box store will, will charge per pound per bag. Um, we need a lot of it. But yeah, if you just need 50 pounds or something, certainly, I think big box stores sell it. It's, it's great to see more and more places really embracing organic gardening. And because and, again, we don't use salt-based fertilizers in the garden. It's just, it's not necessary. It, it, you can do better with organic, not do healthier with organic. Yes, you do, but you actually have a better garden if you use organic soil amendments versus um, salt-based ones. Any more questions? No? All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you.